What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Zoom Leader Geo, and this is season five, week one of the GBA. And it is my matchup as the San Francisco Giantes coach against my opponent, Nick Superblah, the coach of the Boston Red Sox. Now, Nick drafted an incredible team, um, and he is an incredible battler, and he has a lot of accolades in the GBA um, in the seasons prior to his. Uh, his departure in the crumbling season three. And uh, I went into this match really nervous, uh, very, very, very nervous, uh, more nervous than I'd been in a long time for a GBA match, just because it's the first match of the season. And, and I, I carried a lot of that with me. There's not going to be a team builder video for this week. I'm going to try and talk about the sets as I go into the match. But um, as you guys can see, this is going to be a post-com. This is going to be the only one, hopefully, that I ever have to do um, for this season. Uh, the reason that I'm doing it is that I had this battle uh, the day after my computer had died. So I had to get a new computer. I had no recording software. I did not have um, my mic avail my mic or my... Uh, <laughs> My mic or my webcam available to record, and I just, uh, but I had to have the battle. So I just, I had the battle. Uh, I wasn't obviously able to record myself during the time. So I'm just going to do a, a post con now. I almost never do these. So I'm going to do my best to try and keep up and see how all these other uh, post comers do. So I'm going to hit play now. And we're going to kind of get into the battle a little bit. Now, um, a really big thing about his team were was some of the major threats like Nitto King. I really need to scout. This is going to be a very scout heavy match for me. So I choose to lead out with Ditto and I see the uh, Cherubimon, his Mega Audino. Obviously he hasn't mega yet so I'm going to be non-mega which is actually better for me in the sense that if he... No, if I choose to stay in... I don't know. I could have gone for something there but I didn't really see the need. I could have then left after and gone for... Um, got my... Regenerator off, but instead I switch into Nato Nato my Hippowdon. I, uh, I kick up the sand. Uh, we're gonna have a little bit of a pseudo weather war here, obviously, or I'm suspecting because of the um, the, the Manaphy. He goes for a knockoff here. Nato Nato is gonna take that, and he doesn't desperately need the leftovers. Uh, I get the chip damage on the Cherubimon. Now, here I'm predicting him to switch, and I want to know who his switch in is for Hippowdon, and it's Manaphy. So uh, I'm just going to go for a Whirlwind right away. This is not to try and rack up hazard damage, obviously. It's to not give him a free switch in to a potential threat. Chimeramon comes in, and I don't think he can kill me even if he's Modest Life Orb. Um, he could if he was Specs, but that'd be good knowledge to know. So I'm just going to go for an Earthquake outright, try and take this guy down. He is the biggest threat to my team. He switches back into Marine and Jawin. Uh, we see there that because of the damage that he took, I calc that he must be physically defensive, which is good to know. Uh, an answer for Entei, I'm sure. Um, so I'm going to switch out a Nato Nato here, uh, predicting an attack or something. Just to be safe, I go into Eggington. It's really early in the game. He goes for a Rain Dance, predicts the switch. Uh, a good play on his part. We see that now that he's a Rain Dance set, that's one fewer thing to worry about. Uh, he could be a Rain Dance Tail Glow set, but Eggington still will wall a plus six in the Rain Skull, not a Surf, uh, out of a two-hit KO. Uh, he's going to switch back into to Cherubimon here as I go for a Wish. Anticipating that this guy's going to go for a knockoff again, uh, I'm going to switch back into Hippowdon and also end the Rain. Um, knowing that I can do handle pretty much anything this guy does. And the big thing here is I don't want him passing a bunch of wishes this game. I don't want him to keep wishes on himself. I want to make him rue the fact that he brought wish on this Pokemon. So he goes for a wish here, and I'm just going to whirlwind it out. There's no way I'm going to let him give it to a Pokemon of choice. He might switch in to, say, Manaphy here. I don't want Manaphy taking the wish. He might stay in in Cherubimon, uh, predicting that I go for an Earthquake or something. I just want to keep moving things on. He goes out into the Skarmory here, um, maybe predicting the attack, but I just I switch him into Cress. Um, Cress is not a great Mon matchup for me here. I do have Toxic, so I figure I'll go for a Toxic, eat up his Ice Beam, and then I'll just switch out after that. Um, but he is going to make an immediate double back into Skarmory. 
Um, so here, since I missed the Toxic, I don't really have anything for this guy. And if I go for Whirlwind, he's just going to get up his rocks for free. So I'm going to switch into Remix and figure I can defog his rocks out. It comes to my attention after I imposter this guy, he does not have defog, uh, which makes sense now that I think about it because his team doesn't really suffer from rocks. So he can just get up rocks freely and force me to defog them away if I want them gone or force me to rapid spin them or something, but I don't have defog on my Latias because I didn't anticipate that. So I just go for the rocks here just because I'd like some chip damage to help Entei nail some uh, one-hit KOs. Uh, here I, I stay in and go for the Roost and I'm scouting to see if he's Scarfed. I see him switch attack so I know that he's not. I go for Roost again here. In retrospect, it's not that it was a misplay. I think there was a better play. I actually think I still stand by my mode here. I needed to scout this guy, and it wasn't safe to switch into a lot of different mods, except that if I, I could have anticipated that lightning bolt there and switched into Latias, um, who would have outsped and forced this guy out or O code. So I have to switch out here. I'm going to go into Eggington. It's an obvious switch, I know. Um, but I have to do it anyway. So he goes for Earth Power here, and I calc this after I see the damage and see that it's 252 Special Attack Life Lord. Um, and I think, okay, that means I can survive a Super Power. So I click Counter here, and um, it turns out he's 252 Attack as well. No Speed Investment. And I really was upset about this play because I shouldn't have risked it. I had a switch in. It was so obvious that he's going for super power. I have it in all my calcs littered throughout it. I knew he was going for super power. I just really, I guess I got baited into wanting to use the counter and I shouldn't have. There was a chance that it killed if given certain specific adjustments to his EVs. And as you see, he played the EVs great. I bring an Entei to force out that guy because I can one shot KO him with Sacred Fire. I go for the Sacred Fire here on uh, Greymon and uh, I get the crit and I also get the burn, which was very lucky for me. I mean, the crit was lucky. The burn is 50-50. Um, but the thing is, is that this must have been a fully defensive or at least very high defensive in order to take the attack that well, which I thought was a curious thing because you don't really want to switch that in and take a burn. So it seems like a weird switch for Entei, but, but all is fair. I actually had Iron Head on that Entei, so if I could have predicted this guy, I could have gone for it there and maybe done even better. Nato Nato is one of my safe switches into this guy. A big issue I had was if um, Greymon came in on the wrong Mon and he was banded, he actually wrecked shop on my team. So I brought two Pokemon to counter that and also the Mien Xiao, who, again, another Pokemon that if he'd gone banded was very difficult for me. I go for the Whirlwind here, um, predicting that he was going to switch into someone different. Uh, I didn't think he was going to go into Cherubimon. He brings in Marine Anjuin. Again, um, this isn't a matchup that I enjoy. I think he's gonna go for Rain Dance, but it's it's too risky to play around a potential Tail Glow. I haven't seen his full set yet, so my my move here is to switch into the red one. Who I, I'm not anticipating he's gonna go for Ice Beam, and he might not even have it. But he does end up going for Rain Dance, and here I don't think. He knows that I'm offensively invested. However, I'm offensively invested with leftovers. Uh, so that's kind of the goal there is to catch him off guard. I go for the um, I go for the Thunderbolt here, which has a chance to kill him uh, with his, with full HP investment, depending on what the rest of his set is. It does not end up killing. I do get the para, but he does end up going for a rest here. Does not get full parried, and he's up and running. That was a mistake there. I should have played smart and gone for Draco. Because if he switched in, I have for days I have the switch in to Cherubimon. For days. I can do it all day and all night I can switch into that Cherubimon. So uh, he's going to switch out there, maybe anticipating the, the Lightning Bolt, uh, just to take it as well as he can. And, um, and Cherubimon comes in now. And so I, I go for the Thunderbolt here. And, you know, it's... It's too bad. I, I, if I'd played that right, I could have taken out that Manaphy right then and there, and that would have been a, a big threat out of the way. Um, especially given that the point of Blissey was to take on that guy, and with Blissey gone and that guy gone, it's a, it's a lot less important that he's around. I switch into Nato Nato here, and uh, and and the rain, kicking up the rain a little bit again, as he goes for a wish. Um, 
on my Switch. So uh, I get a little bit of damage off on him here. I don't want Cherubimon to get back up to full. So I'm going to go for the Whirlwind here. And as predicted, he does go for the Protect to try and, uh, I don't know, take my attack, stop me from killing him before he gets his Wish off. But I just sit, phase him out right there into the worst possible Pokemon. I'm getting no luck with my Whirlwinds today, but it's a random move. So I can't, I can't blame it for not doing exactly what I want every time. I calced. And there was a chance I could take this, but even if I couldn't, there wasn't really anyone I could switch into. Maybe Entei, but it was very risky. Um, I hadn't actually seen the Ice Beam yet, so there was a chance he didn't pack it. Uh, but it just it just wasn't a safe move. Um, so I, I opted to, to either test it and let myself go down. Now I go in here, make the very obvious force out play by just going for Psychic. It, it's, it was too risky for me not to. Um, Cressemon... Friends in. <laughs> I love the Digimon names, Nick, and um, and eats that up. Now I'm gonna switch into Ditto here because I want to try and get off a of Moonlight. So I wanna I wanna scout his set, see if he's Calm Mind, see if he's Screens, kind of get a view for what's going on here. Uh, Crest can't really beat Crest, so it's a very safe switch for me. Um, and then the unfortunate news when I come in is that he does not have a healing move. He is sub. Sub, or, yeah, sub Calm Mind with Moon Blast and Psychic. Um, so it's not a very scary set for me, except that I no longer have phasing potential, and Remix isn't going to be able to heal up on him. So, um, and I'm already in, so I would have to switch out and then back in on a Skarmory if I wanted to get any recovery. Uh, I could also do it on Cherubimon, but in doing so, I would let him get back up to full. And the goal here is do not let Cherubimon get that attack off. Don't let him get his health back up. He switches into Terramon, who can take both of those attacks with a Flom. Uh, I go for the Moon Blast being the one that hits the mo majority of his team hardest, and he's not gonna, the one that it doesn't, he's not going to switch into right now. Uh, obviously, both of them are resisted by Terramon. Now here, um, I was in a bit of a pickle. I didn't want to switch just for the sake of switching in case he went for a Whirlwind. I thought he might switch back into Cress to try and set up Calm Minds on my potential switch in to... Um, to Skarmory, and so I went for the Calm Mind, which would allow me to survive two Moon Blasts from the from the Crest. He opts to just go for Brave Bird. I didn't really predict he was going to do that. Um, at this point, after the Leftovers recovery, I know I can survive a uh, switch back in on Rocks. So I'm going to opt to switch out and hope that there's a chance I can come in on Terramon later and get a Roost off. So Remix um, pops out of there. Hopefully coming back in at a safe time. And Don Quinn comes in who can take any attack that uh, Skarmory decides to go for. I'm really not that worried. He does opt to go for Brave Bird again here, which is going to do absolutely nothing to me. It is ridiculous how bulky this ride on is. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, I know it's resisted damage and I know it's just a Skarmory, but it's a 120 power stab against this gentleman here. But Don Quinn gives uh, precisely zero Fs. I'm going to go for the Rock Blast here. It's the most damage, and he's clearly going to phase me. There's nothing he wants to do. Uh, I actually end up getting a crit there. I get five hits on this bad boy. Look at the damage just roll in. Um, just put him down into below half territory, which is nice. Really nice. Uh, five hits, and he, he does end up going for the Roar here. I thought that was funny. He has Roar in this guy. I have Roar Wind on, uh, on mine. Remix gets brought in. This could not be a better scenario for me. Uh, I get to become Skarmory alive, and I get to get to take my chance at this Roost, pull back some additional HP for myself. I get a little bit of Leftovers tick here, but it's not going to matter because the only thing that matters is if I can get off this Roost. Uh, we see him get his off also. The reason I stayed in with the uh, Rhydon, by the way, is because the, the Skarmory could do literally nothing to me. So uh, there was no reason for me to switch out, just get as much damage on him as possible. Unfortunately, he wins the Speed Tie, and Remix goes down here. Uh, a bit unfortunate, uh, but I can't, you know, not everything goes my way. I lost, uh, I got a bunch of crits earlier. I got a crit burn earlier. I'm not going to complain about RNG here. Uh, it was a chance for me to get the roost off, and it was the only chance I had to keep him alive. Uh, Decisions is going to force out Terramon, obviously, but uh, my goal here is to try and get a burn on the switch or a kill on this turn. I'm predicting the Manaphy, but I don't want to go for Stone Edge. 
because I don't think it'll be a two-hit KO and being not stabbed and having no additional effect other than the chance to crit. I'm not, I'm not playing around that right now. Uh, I go for it here and I do end up netting the burn, 50% chance. Uh, don't call it a hack, it just ha <laughs> hacks, it just happens. Uh, that's a big selling point for this gentleman here. After the burn damage, I have him at uh, a, a little bit above half, maybe 60%. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to stay in here. It's too risky to, that I'll take a skull. Uh, he he uh, obviously is going to be staying in and predicts that switch nicely and goes for the U-turn. So, too bad I did not end up going for the Sacred Fire there and getting a little bit more damage on this guy. Uh, he does read that very nicely and uh, switches back into Greymon here. Now... This is the single biggest misplay I make in the entire game. I calculated at my remaining HP with my current spread, I could survive a burned, scarfed Dragon Claw. Unfortunately, he is outraged. I have a Rhydon in the back. I have a Rhydon. He's going to do absolutely nothing against the majority of his team. He was brought for this massive threat. The guy was going to get burned. It would invite in either the Nidoking King or the Marie Angel win. As I go for an Earthquake on one of them, they're forced to either take me out and then I get a free switch into decisions anyway. Nothing would have changed except my Latias would have been alive and at good health to try and take on the Manaphy. That was a huge, the single biggest misplay of this entire match. I don't regret, I'm disappointed with some other plays that I made, but that is a bad play on my part. I rushed that play and it was stupid. I go for the Sacred Fire here as he brings in Cherubimon on the double down, which I thought was a not the best switch in for him, um, but I guess he didn't know who, who I was coming in with next. Marie Anjouin is in here at half health with Burn. I thought maybe uh, I'll get another turn to additional Burn damage on him. I'll take another turn. I'm going to switch in Don Quinn here, um, thinking that if he goes for the Rain Dance to cure the Burn, then whatever, it, it, I lost nothing anyway. Don Quinn can't do anything for me the rest of this match. Uh, if he goes for the U-turn, then I'm in a better situation at, with a mom that uh, could maybe put a little hurt, additional hurt on the other guys to try and give Entei a chance to sweep after. The burn damage does put him in range of, um, of another Sacred Fire. I believe it's very close, it's a roll. And I'm at 2 HP left. Um, yes, I did calc that to make sure that I would have survived the re-rocks. I go for the Sacred Fire here and miss. 95 accuracy, so it's not perfect. So I end up not getting the um, not getting the ideal. Playing it out, I still would have lost. He would have come in with Crest. You could survive two of those, uh, barring a crit. Could have played for a crit, but pretty sure he would have survived that and taken me out there. So it just... It, it's... It sucks that you miss a 95 attack that would have made it a 3-0 instead of a 4. I had the chance to make it a 3-0 instead of a 4. It wasn't a guarantee. Um, but, hey, you know what? Giant Ace start off, uh, start off the GBA season the only way we know how, with a, a loss in the first week. That's Guys, that's all we've done in the GBA. We lose the first week. Um, but you know what? I'm not, I'm not upset about losing to Nick. Uh, good battler. He played... He was able... Because I think I... I'm not trying to take anything away from Nick here. I need to preface that. I never try and do that in my videos. Uh, he played and got victory. He was able to play very safe against me because I I think I played like my hand was forced too often. I made almost no aggressive switches and on a team this bulky, and I'm familiar with this type of team, this semi-stall team with a good amount of bulk, uh, the ability to and ditto, like the, the point of ditto is to kind of make those predictions and make some aggressive switches to bring out good situations for me. And I, I just didn't do that at this match. I didn't do it at all. And I made huge misplays, uh, like leaving the Latias in. Latias easily could have helped me with a lot of these other threats. Um, had Thunderbolt to take out the Skarmory. Uh, I could have sacked myself to the Crest with a Draco as he goes for a Moonblast and brought in... Uh, Entei, who could have then one-shot it, he had Thunderbolt, which also would have taken out the Manaphy, and the Psyshock would have killed the Nidoking, so Latias going down was massive for me, absolutely massive, and it's 100% uh, my fault, and it really did, I think Nick might have won anyway, it's hard to say for certain, I needed damage on the Crest prior to some of the other mons on my team going down, 
and it would have created a different situation for Manaphy. Manaphy, at that point of the game, uh, when he finally came in against my Entei, just needed to click Scald and win. Um, but so, which is why I made that double switch, get one additional turn of burn, so that Entei could come in and go for the kill. Obviously, the miss made it different, and I know he would have played different. Probably would have gone for the Rain Dance than the the rest. Uh, had the situation evolved differently, and I'd brought in Rhydon and had Rhydon die. But none of that was a guarantee. So. Either way, you know, it's a learning experience for me. Uh, if I play Nick again, it'll have to be in the postseason. I'm not going to play him again for the rest of this season, but he's got a menacing team, so good luck to the rest of the of the league trying to go up against that. Um, please do check out Nick's channel. I'm going to leave information for that in the description down below. If you want to show your support for the Giantes for the rest of the season, help us bounce back from this loss. We're going up against Dan in week two of season five of the GBA. Dan, a.k.a. A-Drive, the vice champion. I like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing that. Vice champion of both the UCL season one and the GBA season four. We're going up against him in week two. Uh, expect the team preview for that to be coming out maybe Saturday. I'm going to try and get it out by Saturday. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.